okay so good morning student so here we start our lecture uh, from the methods of subsoil exploration so what are the methods of uh, subsoil exploration so basically it has three types first one is a direct method which includes test pit trial pit trenches drip shaft etc second one is semi direct method which includes boring third one is a indirect methods which includes sounding on penetration test or geophysical methods right so first we are talking about uh, direct methods so uh, direct methods can be uh, divided into two categories first one is a pits and trenches and second one is drifts and shafts right so first we talk about pits and trenches right so uh, trial pit and trenches are excavated at the site to inspect the strata so the size of test pit should be sufficient to provide necessary working space so as per ias uh, 4453 uh, to 1980 uh, a clear working space of uh, 1.2 meter by 1.2 meter is required at the bottom of the pit right now talking about shallow pits so shallow pits up to 3 meter depth can be made without any lateral support for deep Uh, for deep pits, especially below the groundwater table, the lateral support in the form of sheeting and bracing system is required. Right, and for the depth which is greater than six meter, bore holes are more economical uh, than the open pits. Right, and uh, talking about uh, trenches, so trenches are long shallow pits. As a trench, it is continuous over the considerable length. It provides exposure along a line. so trenches are more suitable than pits for exploration uh, exploration on the slopes right so uh, that is the our uh, pits and trenches now second we talk about the uh, drifts and shaft right uh, starting with drifts drifts are horizontal uh, tunnels made in the hill side to determine the nature and the structure of the geological formation uh, in ias code which recommend that the drift should have minimum clear dimension of 1.5 meter width and 2 meter height in hard hard core right in a soft rock an arc roof in a more uh, is a more advent, um, advantageous than a flat roof right so the drifts are usually for establishing the minimum excavation limits to reach the sound rock and for locating faults and shear zones and buried channels in the river section so basically drifts are expensive so it is used only when the other methods do not provide the required information drifts are also known as audits right uh now talking about shaft so it is a very large holes made in the geological formation so this may be a rectangular or circular in section so the minimum width of rectangular shaft is 2.4 meter and the circular shaft the minimum diameter is 2.4 meter in a weak ground the sides of the shaft should be properly supported and uh, properly ventilated so the shaft are used to reach particular strata as a depth of 4 meter or more and also used to extend exploration below the river bed already done by men of tunnels right so next is boring right so uh, uh when when the borings are used uh, the borings are used when the depth of exploration is large right a vertical bore hole is drilled into the ground to get the information about the subsoil strata so uh, uh, so then the samples are taken from the bore hole at various depth and tested in the laboratory so that the bore hole may be used for conducting in situ test and for locating the water table right so the uh, common methods of boring are first one is anger boring second is auger and uh, shell boring third one is a wash boring fourth one is a rotary drilling and uh, last one is a uh, percussion drilling right starting with a uh, auger boring so in uh, here 
there are some printing mistake in the first point right here the common methods of boring first one is over boring second is auger and shed boring right so talking about auger boring uh an auger is a tool uh, you mainly used for drilling a bore hole into the ground and also the drilling a bore hole in a cohesive or other soft soils above the ground water table so auger has uh, also two types first one is a hand operated augers which uh, which are basically used for depth up to 6 meter and also used in cohesive and soft soils and the hand operated auger has two type uh, first is a post hole auger and second is helical auger right uh, second is mechanical auger so mechanical auger is uh, used in cohesive soft soils and uh, gravelly soils and used for depth uh, more than 6 meter and up to 12 meter and it is also called as a power augers right as you can see in this figure this uh, first one is a helical auger and second is a post hole auger which are uh, two types of the hand operated augers right so for drilling bore holes the auger is advanced by rotating it while pressing it into the soil at the same time so when the auger is filled with soil it is taken out and the soil sample is collected right okay so basically auger boring is uh, used in soils which can uh, stay open without the casing right so clay silt and uh, partially saturated sands can stand unsupported for soil which uh, cannot stand unsupported especially for sandy soils below the water table casing is normally required for a uh, such soil the method of auger boring uh, becomes a uh, slow and expensive right so the sample of the soil collected by auger are very much uh, disturbed and uh, are useful for identification purpose only so the auger boring uh, is uh, fairly satisfactory when the depth of exploration is small and such as for highways railways air fields borrow pits etc so at that type of uh, at that type of site uh, that type of places like highways railways borrow pits uh when the depth of exploration is small then uh, then and then only auger boring is used because it's a uh, slow and also expensive so next we talk, talk about auger and shell boring right so uh, if the sides of the bore hole cannot remain unsupported the soil is prevented from falling by the means of cylindrical shell or casing along with the auger so the casing is provided with a cutting edge at the lower edge right okay right so casing is given first uh, this casing is given these are the casings right as you can see that the arrow show the exact indication of the words right so the casing driven first into the soil and then the auger is driven right so uh here with the increase in the depth of uh, the bore hole the shell or casing is extensive so during which the auger is withdrawn the equipment used for drilling bore hole is generally known as a boring rig right so the hand operated boring rigs may be used for boring holes up to a depth of 25 meter and power driven or mechanical boring ring uh, for boring holes up to depth of 50 meter right so uh, basically all types of boring looks like that so this is the wash bo uh, wash boring right in this uh, tripod tripod type uh, uh, given right uh, which is connected by a winch and motor and uh, with the help of winch rope is connected to the uh, pulley right and uh, with the help of hook it uh, there are uh, connected and here at the down side casing hollow drill road water uh, water flowing in which direction of or downward direction right there are also a uh, suction pipe provided settling tank is provided water house provided and also the pump is given 
right to, uh, what is the procedure of uh, to set up uh, this uh, wash boring okay so wash boring is a fast and simple method for boring holes into the ground so this method is used all the type of soils except those mixed with uh, gravels and boulders and rocky strata right the setup for wash boring is uh, already uh, you can shown in figure right so basically it means that uh, wash boring is a simple and uh, fast method but it is all, uh, but it is uh, it is generally used uh, generally used in all type of soils but if the uh, gravels boulders and rocky strata uh, are here so we cannot doing this uh, this type of boring right either it should, it is suitable for all types of boring right so initially uh, for starting the method the hole is drilled for a short depth by using an auger right okay so the casing pipe is pushed to the hole right this casing pipes uh, is pushed into the holes this pushed into the uh, hole and driven with a drop weight or with the aid of the power right so a hollow drill with screw the lower end of the hollow drill rod connected to a rope passing over this rod is connected uh, connected to a rope right this rope which is passing over the pulley this pulley that right? which is passing over the pulley and supported by a tripod is inserted in the casing pipe right supported by this tripod so water jet under pressure is forced into the hole through the rod right and uh, uh, and uh, it is alternately raised and dropped right this casing is uh, alternately raised and dropped raised and dropped right and also the rotated so resulting of chopping and jetting action of the bit and water loosen the soil at the lower end and the forces soil water slurry upwards through the annular space between the drill rod and the casing so the soil water slurry is led to a settling tank which is here right and uh, in the settling tank uh, soil particles settles right where the water overflow into the sump, right? Okay, the water collected in this sump is used to uh, is uh, used for circulation again, right? The soil the soil particles collected uh, collected represent a very uh, disturbed sample and is not useful for the evaluation of the engineering property of soil the changes in the soil strata may be indicated by the change in the rate of progress and change in the color of wash water however whenever a soil sample is required the chopping bit is replaced by a soil sampler right so again Fourth one is we're talking about uh, rotary drilling. So uh, this is the fast method of drilling holes in a rock formation. A hollow drill bit fixed to the lower end of the hollow drill road is rotated by power while being kept in the form contact uh, contact with the bottom of the hole. So a uh, drilling fluid, usually uh, bentonite clay slurry is forced under pressure to the drill road and it comes up uh, bringing the cutting to the surface so the drilling fluid supports the walls of the hole and hence no casing is required so this method is however not used in a porous deposit at the uh, consumption of the drilling fluid would be prohibitively high so this method is uh, suitable uh, diamond stub drill baits or steel baits with the shorts the rock cores may be obtained. So this method is known as a core drilling or core boring, right? Next is percussion drilling. So in this type of method is mainly used for making holes in a rocks, boulders and other hard strata. So in this method, a heavy drilling bit called as a churn bit, Right, suspended from a uh, drill rod or uh, a cable is alternately raised and dropped in the vertical hole. So the, by the repeated blow of the drill uh, with the material in the hole gets uh, pulverized. 
if the point where the drill bit strike is above the ground water table water is added to the hole to facilitate the breaking of a steep soil or rock the water from the slurry with the uh, pulverized material which is removed by a baler at intervals okay so one of the major disadvantage is that the material at the top of the hole is disturbed by heavy blows of uh, chisel right it is not possible to get good quality undisturbed samples further the method is more expensive than the other methods okay next is the soil sampling and types of soil samples so the process of uh, obtaining soil samples from the desired depth at a desired location in a natural soil deposit with a few to access the engineering properties of the soil call as a uh, soil sampling right so the determination of ground water level is also considered as a part of soil sampling so the device is uh, is used for obtaining soil samples are known as a soil samplers so there are two types of soil samplers first one is disturbed sample and second one is undisturbed samples what are the difference between these two samples right so in distribute uh, in disturbed uh, soil samples uh, The, uh, this type of sample is that in which the na uh, natural structure of the soil gets partially or fully disturbed right while undisturbed sample is that in which the natural structure of the soil and water content are preserved right uh, in uh, disturbed soil sample is used to determine index property of soil such as grain size plasticity specific gravity etc while in undisturbed sampler can be used to determine shear strength permeability compressibility shrinkage limit etc this type of samples uh, can be obtained by core cutter standard split spool sampler scraper bucket uh, spring core catcher etc in a disturbed soil samples while we are talking about undisturbed soil sample it can be obtained by uh, shelby tube piston uh, sampler chunk Uh, sampler etc right okay okay so uh, here uh, disturbed samples may further subdivided into two parts first one is a non representative sample and second one is representative sample right so in a non representing uh, representative samples it uh, basically consist of mixture of materials from the various soils or rock strata or are the samples from which some minerals constitutes have been lost or got mixed up so the soil samples obtained from uh, auger borings and wash borings are non representative sampler samples right so these are suitable only for providing a uh, qualitative information such as major changes in subsurface strata right so representative sample contains all the mineral constituents of the soil but the structure of the soil may be insignificantly disturbed so the water content may also have changed so that the samples are suitable for identification and for the determination of uh, certain physical properties such as uh, atta box limit and uh, grain specific gravity right so depends on type of taste there are uh, different types of samples required for natural water contained undisturbed or spt sample required for uh, density taste undisturbed uh, sample are required for specific gravity representative or undisturbed uh, sample uh, are necessary for grain size distribution representative or undisturbed uh, undisturbed sample required for atterberg limit is uh, also uh, a representative or undisturbed uh, sample required right and for coefficient of permeability consolidation parameters and shear strength parameters this all are need undisturbed samples only for uh, our laboratory testing right so here we uh, stop our lecture here if you uh, you are not able to or uh, understanding some of the any 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 topic right so you can freely ask me uh
right thank you